Hello and good day to you. My name is Dirk Delis from Muto Belgium and today I will show you how to make a custom jig on the 426 UF printer which can be used for printing on small objects that require a nice accurate positioning. I will demonstrate this workflow to you by printing on these small white cardboard boxes and the jig we will make is of a very cheap material it's a 10 mm cardboard, uh, it's also known as falcon board and to make it easy I've written the dimensions on the plate so it's easy for you to copy this, uh, this plate this will fit exactly on the table of the 426 UF first thing we need to do is prepare some of these rods metric tin 28 mm and we will use these to fix the falcon board to the flat table so I put the falcon board just above the rods like this okay and we mark the position of the rods try to mark more or less the size because we're going to hand carve these out okay. this is some of the better handiwork so when we are finished with carving out these triangles we can match the falcon board on the flat table giving us a nice solid foundation to start printing the positioning of the boxes on the jig <coughs> so the next thing that we do is measuring the dimensions of our object we want to print on this is like let's say roughly 55 by 90, let's say 97. So the next thing we do is start Adobe Illustrator and we will create a digital file. So the printer has a width of 473 millimeters, a maximum height of 310, this is the full table size. And now I just need to mark the place where the objects will come, in this case the boxes, which were 55 mm by 97 mm. So this is one. I'm going to place this over here, copy it, make a second one. Just going to do two boxes for a quick demonstration, like this. Okay, this is the file which we need to save. I'm going to put this on my desktop. White boxes. And now the idea is to print this file so I get a clear marking on the cardboard where the boxes will be placed. So notice I'm going to choose full size. Um, depending on your illustrator, you might find this hiccup with the preview. So don't worry about that, um, although the preview doesn't really show full table size, it's going a little bit out of there. It's not a big deal, just make sure you do a center placement, full size, and then you go to the driver setup. Don't forget to switch on the rotate 180 degrees. We can print directly, we don't need the layer editor in this case in full color and the fast mode ok print print and done printing is done so at this point we have a positioning for the boxes so the idea is quite simple now, 
we just take a knife and we cut out these shapes and afterwards the box will fit in there perfectly. Perfect fit. At this point, after the carving, we can mount the jig back on the vacuum table and we take the objects there, there, perfect, and we lower the table to get the correct height. Close and press the set media button so the laser can check if nothing is too high. Ready to print. As a final step in this whole process, we switch back to the Illustrator program where the file with the white boxes is still open. First things first, I'm going to rename this to the position layer, right? You might want to lock this, just to be sure that nothing is moving. I need, of course, a varnish layer and I also need a color layer. You can also add a white layer, but in this case, on the white boxes, it won't do any good. I need to import some artwork. So this little fellow, the robot, I'm going to copy it and paste the robot and move it right on top of one of the boxes. Again, Ctrl copy, Ctrl V gives me a brother for the robot, for the second box of course. So you have multiple boxes, so you can repeat this. They are now in the color layer, so I now require uh, to have something in the varnish layer as well to protect the ink. So what I will do is I will copy this. I'm going to the varnish level. And very important in Illustrator, if I would just choose paste, it will end up in the middle of my page, which I do not want. I want it to be on the exact same position from where I copied them from, which is paste in place. As you can see, shift Control v is the shortcut. I'm going to use the menu now. And there they are, in the varnish layer, my two robots, which I need to unite. I'm going to the Pathfinder, Unite, that's it to the layers. If you want, I'm switching off the color layer now, if you want to print with the gradings, which is not the case now, you want to make sure that um, the darkest color or uh, the places where you want to have the most ink should be the darkest color. I'm just making a habit, a habit out of this. So I'm going to switch the fill color to total black. That's it. So now I want to print these two fellows. I will start with switching of the position layer. don't want to print that. I don't want to print the varnish layer. At this point, I only want to print the color layer. Prior to doing so, I will of course save the file. I'll call these the robots. Save it. And observe, the name of the file has changed into robots.ai which is important because this is how they will appear in the layer editor. So I'm going to File, Print, Media Size, Full Size. The important thing now is that you do the exact same maneuvering as you have done when you created the jig. So again we get this preview hiccup, not a big issue. Make sure you choose Center Placement and Next thing, we go to the driver setup. Preferences, yes, we want six color. I switched on the rotate to make the jig, so I'm going to switch on the rotate to print the robots. Print mode, fast. In the advanced, we can have some extra settings. The vacuum fan will not be needed for this type of material. Low carriage speed, you might want to do this for more accurate dot placement and not to waste any time. We Gonna go only data with on head traveling. Okay, 
But very important here is that we go to the option window and print to the layer editor. The data will be captured there and this will give me the option to choose in which layers I want to print. So I do print, print, the color layer has left towards the layer editor. Switching of the color layer, switching on the varnish. So these black silhouettes represent the varnish. And I go and again go to print. And everything should be remembered. Full size, center placement, setup, preferences. Yes, the rotate. If we check in the advanced, it's all remembered. Even the layer editor. The only thing we should change is that we want this to be varnish. OK, print, print. And as you can see on my printer icon here, both files are printing. So next I can start my layer editor. I don't need the illustrator anymore. So I'm starting the ValueJet layer editor. And if not already present, in this case they are, you can click the update button of course. But you see that my files have arrived, uh, actually two files. There is one for the color and one for the varnish. And this nifty little program is giving me the option to determine in which order these should be printed. One click on the change layer mode and you get the single color possibilities, you get the multi-table possibilities, but we want to use single table and print varnish on top of color. That's what we want. So I take the color and assign this to the color ink layer. I take the varnish, I assign this to the varnish ink layer and one click on the print button and the file is printing. Printing is finished, so when we open the cover of the machine, two robot boxes appear with perfect positioning in a cheap and fast way. My name is Dirk Dennis, and this was how to make a custom jig on your 426UF. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.